Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture 12 of software engineering course. Uh, so the today's topic is Dependability and security specification. Okay, the topics we are going to cover today are Risk driven specification Safety specification Security specification Software reliability specification Okay, so let's start with Dependability requirements Functional requirements to define error checking and recovery facilities and protection against system failures Non-functional requirements defining the required reliability and availability of the system, excluding requirements that define states and conditions that must not arise. Okay, some of the uh, students were confused with non-functional requirements. You see, uh, that is defining the required reliability and availability of the system, and uh, which will be non-functional requirements. Okay, let's continue. Risk driven specification. Critical system specification should be risk driven. This approach has been widely used in safety and security critical systems. The aim of the specification process should be to understand the risks safety, security, etc. faced by the system and to define requirements that reduce these risks. Okay. Stages of risk-based analysis Okay, first, risk identification. Identify potential risks that may arise. Risk analysis and classification. Assess the seriousness of each risk. Uh, risk decomposition, Decompo decompose risks to discover their potential root causes. Risk reduction assessment, define how each risk must be taken into eliminated or reduced when the system is designed. Okay, so the risk this risk driven this specification is uh, shown like this. And one moment, I will fix this. Okay, so risk driven uh, specification, you see there is risk identification and risk description. Then there is uh, risk analysis and risk assessment, risk uh, decomposition, root cause of analysis, root, uh, uh, to uh, say it correctly, root cause analysis, okay, uh, risk reduction and dependability requirements. Phased risk analysis. Preliminary risk analysis. Identifies risks from the system's environment. Aim is to develop an initial set of system security and dependability requirements. Life cycle risk analysis. Identifies risks that emerge during design and development e.g. risks that are associated with the technologies used for system construction. Requirements are extended to protect against these risks. Operational risk analysis. Risks associated with the system user interface and operator errors. Further protection requirements may be added to cope with these. Safety specification. Okay. Goal is to identify protection requirements that ensure that system failures do not cause injury or death or environmental damage. Risk identification equals hazard identification. Risk analysis equals hazard assessment. Risk decomposition equals hazard analysis. Risk reduction equals safety requirement specification. Okay, so this is a much more explanatory. Uh, when you think as an hazard, risk identification equals the hazard identification, risk analysis equals the hazard assessment, risk decomposition equals the hazard analysis, risk reduction equals the safety requirements specification. Okay. Hazard identification. 
Identify the hazards that may threaten the system. Hazard identification may be based on different types of hazard, physical hazards, electrical hazards, biological hazards, service failure hazards, etc. Okay. Insulin pump risks. You see, when they develop an insulin pump, they also analyze and assess the risks that comes with the system. It is extremely important important insulin overdose service failure insulin underdose service failure power failure due to exhausted battery electrical electrical interference with other medical equipment electrical poor sensor and actuator contact physical parts of machine break off in body physical infection caused by introduction of machine biological allergic reaction to materials or insulin biological you see they are uh, separated by their related uh, categories such as service failure, electrical, physical, biological. Okay. Hazard assessment. The process is concerned with understanding the likelihood that a risk will arise and the potential consequences if an accident or incident should occur. Risks may be categorized as intolerable must never arise or result in an accident as low as reasonably practical alarp must minimize the possibility of risk given cost and schedule constraints acceptable the consequences of the risk are acceptable and no extra costs should be incurred to reduce hazard probability okay the risk triangle is like this you see alarp region which is the as low as reasonably practical risk tolerated only if risk reduction is impractical or excessively expensive this area and there is acceptable region this area negligible risk and at the very top or the bottom of the reverse uh, triangle unacceptable region risk cannot be tolerated such as it may lead to death when you overdose the uh, patient it may result in death therefore it is unacceptable okay social acceptability of risk the acceptability of a risk is determined by human social and political considerations in most societies the boundaries between the regions are pushed upwards with time i.e society is less willing to accept risk For example, the costs of cleaning up pollution may be less than the costs of preventing it, but this may not be socially acceptable. Risk assessment is subjective. Risks are identified as probable, unlikely, etc. This depends on who is making the assessment. So you see the risk assessment is subjective, it is not very much objective. Uh, however, you may uh, follow some approaches to have somewhat balanced or more uh, objective risk assessment. Estimate the risk probability and the risk severity. It is not normally possible to do this precisely so relative values are used such as unlikely, rare, very high, etc. The aim must be to exclude risks that are likely to arise or that have high severity. Risk classification for the insulin pump. Okay, the first column is identified hazard. Second one is hazard probability. Third is accident severity is estimated risk the estimated risk is based on the hazard probability and accident uh, severity and based on the estimated risk we uh, decide the acceptability okay one insulin overdose computation medium high high intolerable you see since it is medium and high the estimated risk is high then it is intolerable Two, insulin underdose computation. 
It is medium and low, therefore the estimated risk is low, that therefore it's acceptable. So you see under those computation doesn't necessarily harm uh, or let's say doesn't necessarily uh, induce acute harm. Therefore, uh, the accident severity is low. Therefore, it is acceptable. Failure of hardware monitoring system. It may happen with medium chance and accident severity is medium. Therefore, it is estimated risk is low. However, this time it is not acceptable, but ALRP because the accident severity is also low, not low. It is, uh, accident severity is medium, not low. Therefore, it is uh, a bit un, a, a bit more unacceptable than acceptable. Okay. Power failure, hazard probability is high. It may happen commonly. Accident severity is low. Therefore, the estimated risk is low, acceptable. Uh, machine incorrectly fitted, hazard probability high. Accident severity high, therefore estimated risk is high, therefore it is intolerable. Then machine breaks in patient, hazard probability low, so it may happen run, uh, it may happen rarely. Accident severity is high, therefore estimated risk, risk is medium, therefore it is ALR, ALIRP. Uh, machine causes infection, hazard probability medium, accident severity medium. Estimated risk is medium. Uh, electrical inference, low, high, medium. Allergic reaction, low, low, low. Acceptable. Okay, so uh, I will add this to the, your uh, course. I mean your um, semester project requirement. As a project details, okay. So we have also added some more in the previous lecture, if you remember. So uh, let's call it as Okay. All right, let's continue. Hazard analysis. Concerned with discovering the root causes of risks in a particular system, techniques have been mostly derived from safety critical systems and can be inductive, bottom-up techniques. Start with a proposed system failure and assess the hazards that could arise from that failure, deductive, top-down techniques. Start with a hazard and deduce what the causes of this could be. Fault tree analysis. A deductive top-down technique. Put the risk or hazard at the root of the tree and identify the system states that could lead to that hazard. Where appropriate, link these with and or or conditions. A goal should be to minimize the number of single causes of system failure. An example of a software fault tree. Okay, so uh, it starts from top and goes to the bottom in here i think incorrect insulin dose administered so the error here is incorrect insulin dose administration and then it uh, starts branching and calculating how might it happen okay so it may happen due to one of these three reasons you see they are or 
incorrect sugar level measured, correct dose delivered at the wrong time, delivery system failure. So each of these um, error may cause incorrect insulin dose administration. So incorrect sugar level measured uh, can be caused by two errors, which are sensor failure or sugar computation error. Then the sugar computation error may be caused by two different errors, which are algorithm error or arithmetic error. The correct dose delivered at real time may be happened, may be caused by the timer failure. Delivery system failure may be caused by two different uh, errors. First one is insulin computation is incorrect or pump signals incorrect. The insulin computation incorrect may be caused by two different uh, errors, which are algorithm error and arithmetic error. So let's add this to your um, uh, to your project. Page eighteen. Okay. Fault tree analysis. Three possible conditions that can lead to delivery of incorrect dose of insulin. Incorrect measurement of blood sugar level failure of delivery system dose delivered at wrong time. By analysis of the fault tree, root causes of these hazards related to software are Algorithm error arithmetic error Risk reduction The aim of this process is to identify dependability requirements that specify how the risks should be managed and ensure that accidents, incidents do not arise. Risk reduction strategies Risk avoidance, risk detection and removal, damage limitation. You see there are three strategies that we can apply. Risk avoidance, which is best. We avoid the risk if possible. Risk detection and removal uh this is about detecting the risk and removing it uh, before the actual damage is uh, done and the last one is the risk happens but we try to limitate the damage okay strategy use normally in critical systems a mix of risk reduction strategies are used in a chemical plant control system, the system will include sensors to detect and correct excess pressure in the reactor. However, it will also include an independent protection system that opens a relief valve if dangerously high pressure is detected. So you see, it is a mix of uh, strategies. Uh, the first strategy is, the system will include sensors to detect and correct excess pressure in the reactor. Uh, which is risk detection and removal and the third one is damage limitation however it will also include an independent protection system that opens a relief valve if dangerous high pressure is detected okay insulin pump software risks arithmetic error a computation causes the value of a variable to overflow or underflow maybe include an exception handler for each type of arithmetic error algorithmic error compare dose to be delivered with previous dose or safe maximum doses reduce dose if too high examples of safety requirements Okay, one moment I will pass. Okay. Okay. So, uh, examples of uh, safety requirements. Okay, safety requirement one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's uh, read them. 
State Route 1, the system shall not deliver a single dose of insulin that is greater than a specified maximum dose for a system user. State Route 2, the system shall not deliver a daily cumulative dose of insulin that is greater than a specified maximum daily dose for a system user. State Route 3, the system shall include a hardware diagnostic facility that shall be executed at least four times per hour. State Route 4, the system shall include an exception handler for all of the exceptions that are identified in Table 3. State Route 5, the audible alarm shall be sounded when any hardware or software anomaly is discovered and a diagnostic message, as defined in Table 4, shall be displayed. State Route 6, in the event of an alarm, insulin delivery shall be suspended until the user has reset the system and cleared the alarm. Okay, you see these are the uh, safety requirements that are defined to prevent uh, incidents or harm or damage. And uh, so let's add something like this to your uh, project as well. Prepare uh, an example so. Prepare an examples of safety requirements such as uh, uh, for your system. Your lecture three and page twenty three. Okay, let's continue. So the key points of the first uh, part is uh, like here let's read it risk analysis is an important activity in the specification of security and dependability requirements it involves identifying risks that can result in accidents or incidents a hazard driven approach may be used to understand the safety requirements for a system you identify potential hazards and decompose these using methods such as fault tree analysis to discover their root causes Safety requirements should be included to ensure that hazards and accidents do not arise or, if this is impossible, to limit the damage caused by system failure. Okay, so your uh, system that you are going to develop for this course may not have health hazard or uh, such harmful, harmful hazard. However, you can still define risk uh, requirements uh, and those risks may not be that very important, but there are there would be still some risks that can bother the user, that can um, uh, affect the user, and you should uh, define them. So in any system, for every system, these can be um, uh, let's say defined. Okay, the uh, safety requirements can be defined for any system. System Reliability Specification Reliability is a measurable system attribute so non-functional reliability requirements may be specified quantitatively. These define the number of failures that are acceptable during normal use of the system or the time in which the system must be available. Functional reliability requirements define system and software functions that avoid, detect, or tolerate faults in the software and so ensure that these faults do not lead to system failure. Software reliability requirements may also be included to cope with hardware failure or operator error. Okay, reliable test specification process, uh, risk identification. Identify the types of system failure that may lead to economic losses. Okay, for any system, this can be identified. For example, let's say you are developing a e-commerce website. This can be defined. You are developing a student management system. This can be defined. And for any, any system, you are developing a game. This can be defined. This can be identified. Risk analysis. Estimate the costs and consequences of the different types of software failure. Okay, this is also possible for every system. 
Risk decomposition. Identify the root causes of system failure. Okay, and risk reduction. Generate reliability specifications, including quantitative requirements defining the acceptable levels of failure. Okay, types of system failure. So there are system failure types, uh, failure type and description. Loss of service. Okay. The system is unavailable and cannot deliver its services to users. You may separate this into loss of critical services and loss of non-critical services, where the consequences of a failure in non-critical services are less than the consequences of critical service failure. Okay. Incorrect service delivery. The system does not deliver a service correctly to users. Again, this may be specified in terms of minor and major errors or errors in the delivery of critical and non-critical services. Uh, system data, system uh, or data corruption, corruption. The failure of the system causes damage to the system itself or its data. This will usually but not necessarily be in conjunction with other types of failures. All right, and there are uh, reliable metrics. Reliability metrics are units of measurement of system reliability. System reliability is measured by counting the number of operational failures and, where appropriate, relating these to the demands made on the system and the time that the system has been operational. A long-term measurement program is required to assess the reliability of critical systems. Okay, what metrics are used? Uh, probability of failure on demand, rate of occurrence of failures, mean time to failure, availability. Okay. Probability of failure on demand, POFOD. This is the probability that the system will fail when a service request is made. Useful when demands for service are intermittent and relatively infrequent. Appropriate for protection systems where services are demanded occasionally and where there are serious consequences if the service is not delivered. Relevant for many safety critical systems with exception management components. Okay, for example, emergency shutdown system in a chemical plant. You see, this is how it is important. This may never be used, therefore, it is very inf infrequently used. However, if it, when it is necessary failure of this system uh, would cause catastrophic damage okay so you see how it is important uh, probability of failure on demand rate of fault occurrence rocof reflects the rate of occurrence of failure in the system rocof of 0.002 means two failures are likely in each 1000 operational time units eg two failures per 1000 hours of operation relevant for systems where the system has to process a large number of similar requests in a short time credit card processing system airline booking system reciprocal of rocof is mean time to failure mttf relevant for systems with long transactions i.e where system processing takes a long time e.g cad systems mttf should be longer than expected transaction length okay and availability measure of the fraction of the time that the system is available for use takes repair and restart time into account availability of 0 0.998 means software is available for 998 out of 1000 time units relevant for non-stop continuously running systems telephone switching systems railway signaling systems okay Availability specification. So there are availability. You see 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.99, 9999, and 0 0.9999. So the explanation of 0 0.9. The system is available for 90% of the time. 
This means that, in a 24-hour period, 1,440 minutes, the system will be unavailable for 144 minutes. Okay, this is uh, 0.99%. In a 24-hour period, the system is unavailable for 14.4 minutes. The system is unavailable for 84 seconds in a 24-hour period. The system is unavailable for 8.4 seconds in a 24-hour period. Roughly, one minute per week. Okay, failure consequences. Failure consequences. When specifying reliability, it is not just the number of system failures that matter but the consequences of these failures. Failures that have serious consequences are clearly more damaging than those where repair and recovery is straightforward. In some cases, therefore, different reliability specifications for different types of failure may be defined. Okay. Overspecification of reliability. Overspecification of reliability is a situation where a high level of reliability is specified but it is not cost effective to achieve this. In many cases, it is cheaper to accept and deal with failures rather than avoid them occurring. To avoid overspecification, specify reliability requirements for different types of failure. Minor failures may be acceptable. Specify requirements for different services separately. Critical services should have the highest reliability requirements. Decide whether or not high reliability is really required or if dependability goals can be achieved in some other way. You see, uh, we need to balance uh, between the reliability and the cost of the reliability. Uh, therefore, uh, in many cases, it is cheaper to accept and deal with failures rather than avoid them occurring. If the uh, occurring of event is one in a million, it, it may be not practical or um, cost effective to avoid it. It may be just easier to accept it and when it happens, uh, pay the costs. Okay. Steps to a reliability specification. For each sub-system, analyze the consequences of possible system failures. From the system failure analysis, partition failures into appropriate classes. For each failure class identified, set out the reliability using an appropriate metric. Different metrics may be used for different reliability requirements. Identify functional reliability requirements to reduce the chances of critical failures. Insulin pump specification. Probability of failure POFOD, is the most appropriate metric. Transient failures that can be repaired by user actions such as recalibration of the machine. A relatively low value of POFOD is acceptable, say 0.002, one failure may occur in every 500 demands. Permanent failures require the software to be reinstalled by the manufacturer. This should occur no more than once per year. POFOD for this situation should be less than 0.00002. Functional reliability requirements. Checking requirements that identify checks to ensure that incorrect data is detected before it leads to a failure. Recovery requirements that are geared to help the system recover after a failure has occurred. Redundancy requirements that specify redundant features of the system to be included. Process requirements for reliability which specify the development process to be used may also be included. Examples of functional reliability requirements for MHCPMS. Okay, mental health care patient management system. Uh, so let's read them. RR1, a pre-defined range for all operator inputs shall be defined and the system shall check that all operator inputs fall within this predefined range. 
Checking RR2 copies of the patient database shall be maintained on two separate servers that are not housed in the same building. Recovery, redundancy RR3 N version programming shall be used to implement the braking control system. Redundancy RR4 the system must be implemented in a safe subset of ADA and checked using static analysis. Process. Okay, let's add this one as well to your project. All right. Security specification. Security specification has something in common with safety requirements specification. In both cases, your concern is to avoid something bad happening. Four major differences. Safety problems are accidental, the software is not operating in a hostile environment. In security, you must assume that attackers have knowledge of system weaknesses. When safety failures occur, you can look for the root cause or weakness that led to the failure. When failure results from a deliberate attack, the attacker may conceal the cause of the failure. Shutting down a system can avoid a safety-related failure. Causing a shutdown may be the aim of an attack. Safety-related events are not generated from an intelligent adversary. An attacker can probe defenses over time to discover weaknesses. Okay, type of security requirement. Let's see the types. Identification requirements. Authentication requirements. Authorization requirements, immunity requirements, integrity requirements, intrusion detection requirements, non repudiation requirements, privacy requirements, security auditing requirements, system maintenance security requirements. You see, there are uh, many uh, types of security requirements. The preliminary risk assessment process for security requirements. Okay, you see it starts with assessed, asset identification. First, you need to know your assets. Then you need to asset value assessment, threat identification, threat identification. Then uh, from threat identification, attack, attack assessment. And from attack assessment, you need to have control identification. And, and then you need to make feasible assessment of that control identification of, the, of that control then from attack assessment you need to make security requirement definition and you need to consider feasible assessment as well then from assessed value assessment asset value assessment you need to uh, calculate exposure assessment and based on exposure assessment attack assessment and feasible assessment you need to Define security requirement definition. Okay. Security risk assessment. It starts with assessed asset identification. Identify the key system assets or services that have to be protected. Asset value assessment. Estimate the value of the identified assets. Exposure assessment. Assess the potential losses associated with each asset. Threat identification. Identify the most probable threats to the system assets. Security risk assessment. Attack assessment. Decompose threats into possible attacks on the system and the ways that these may occur. Control identification. Propose the controls that may be put in place to protect an asset. Feasibility assessment. Assess the technical feasibility and cost of the controls. 
Security Requirements Definition Define system security requirements. These can be infrastructure or application system requirements. Asset analysis in a preliminary risk assessment report for the MHC PMS. Okay, so the asset, for example, the information system itself is an asset or service. The value is high, required to support all clinical consultations, potentially safety critical. Okay, so the exposure will cause high. Financial loss as clinics may have to be cancelled. Costs of restoring system. Possible patient harm if treatment cannot be prescribed. You see, a lot of uh, hazard. The patient database itself is an asset. High. Required to support all clinical consultations. Potentially safety critical. Okay, the exposure. High. Financial loss as clinics may have to be cancelled. Costs of restoring system. Possible patient harm if treatment cannot be prescribed. Okay. An individual patient record. Each individual patient record is, an also, is also an asset. Normally low although may be high for specific high-profile patients. Yeah, you see high-profile patients may uh, cause a lot of trouble uh, than some uh, random patients. Okay, the exposure would be low direct losses but possible loss of reputation. If, if, cert if uh, certain if that uh, patient is a high-profile patient. Threat and control analysis in a preliminary risk assessment report. Okay, you see there are threat, probability, control, and feasibility. Unauthorized user gains access as system manager and makes system unavailable low only allow system management from specific locations that are physically secure. Low cost of implementation but care must be taken with key distribution and to ensure that keys are available in the event of an emergency. Okay, so the threat is this, the probability is low, the control for the threat and the feasibility of the control. You see, not only control but also the feasibility of the control is important. For controlling, only allow system management from specific locations that are physically secure. Okay. This is making sense. However, if it is, it is it feasible, low cost of implementation, but care must be taken with key distribution and to, and to ensure that keys are available in the event of an emergency. Okay, the threat. Unauthorized user gains access as system user and accesses confidential information. The probability is high because people's, people may be using uh, weak passwords or uh, one of your employees password may be weak or such require all users to authenticate themselves using biometric mechanism block all changes to patient information to track system usage technically feasible but high cost solution possible user resistance this is true simple and transparent to implement and also supports recovery you see the first control is very hard to implement it is not much feasible you may not get a uh, bio, uh, biometric uh, from uh, patients. However, the second one, logging, is extremely simple and easy. Therefore, it should be implemented. So, I think we can add this to your project as well. Prepare a threat and control analysis in a permanent assessment for your system, such as explained in page 46. Okay. Okay, security policy. 
an organizational security policy applies to all systems and sets out what should and should not be allowed. For example, a military policy might be, readers may only examine documents whose classification is the same as or below the reader's vetting level. A security policy sets out the conditions that must be maintained by a security system and so helps identify system security requirements. Okay. Security requirements for the MHC PMS. Patient information shall be downloaded at the start of a clinic session to a secure area on the system client that is used by clinical staff. All patient information on the system client shall be encrypted. Patient information shall be uploaded to the database after a clinic session has finished and deleted from the client computer. A log on a separate computer from the database server must be maintained of all changes made to the system database. Okay, so you see these are the security requirements, and you have to um, make you have to make sure that you are following these to have secure uh, system in uh, mental health care uh, patient management system. Formal specification. Formal specification is part of a more general collection of techniques that are known as formal methods. These are all based on mathematical representation and analysis of software. Formal methods include formal specification, specification analysis and proof, transformational development, program verification. Use of formal methods the principal benefits of formal methods are in reducing the number of faults in systems. Consequently, their main area of applicability is in critical systems engineering. There have been several successful projects where formal methods have been used in this area. In this area, the use of formal methods is most likely to be cost effective because high system failure costs must be avoided. Specification in the software process Specification and design are inextricably intermingled. Architectural design is essential to structure a specification and the specification process. Formal specifications are expressed in a mathematical notation with precisely defined vocabulary, syntax and semantics. Formal specification in a plan-based software process Okay, increasing contractor involvement uh, from left to right, decreasing client involvement, and the specification and design. So, user requirements definition. In this area, we are doing specification, we are increasing contractor involvement and decreasing client involvement. <laughs> As we go to the right, <laughs> and from user requirements, we involve clients, of course. From system requirements, we lesser involve uh, users than we go to the architectural design, then formal specification, and then high level design. It is intermingled, as you can see. Benefits of formal specification Developing a formal specification requires the system requirements to be analyzed in detail. This helps to detect problems, inconsistencies and incompleteness in the requirements. As the specification is expressed in a formal language, it can be automatically analyzed to discover inconsistencies and incompleteness. If you use a formal method such as the B method, you can transform the formal specification into a correct program. Program testing costs may be reduced if the program is formally verified against its specification. Okay, there is B method. Let's check it out. The B method is a method of software development based on B, a tool supported formal method based on an abstract machine notation used in the development of computer software. It was originally developed in the 1980s by Jean Raymond Abriel, one in France and the UK. B is related to the Z notation, also originated by Abriel, and supports development of programming language code from specifications. 
B has been used in major safety critical system applications in Europe such as the automatic Paris Metro Lines 14 and 1 and the Ariane 5 rocket. It has robust, commercially available tool support for specification, design, proof and code generation. Let's look for a, let's try to find some images of B methods. Okay. No, not this one. Hmm. What kind of, what kind of tool it is I'm trying to find? DB method tool, let's try to find images to that. Okay, anyway, we have the idea of what is it, what it is. Acceptance of formal methods. Formal methods have had limited impact on practical software development, problem owners cannot understand a formal specification and so cannot assess if it is an accurate representation of their requirements. It is easy to assess the costs of developing a formal specification but harder to assess the benefits. Managers may therefore be unwilling to invest in formal methods. Software engineers are unfamiliar with this approach and are therefore reluctant to propose the use of FM. Formal methods are still hard to scale up to large systems. Formal specification is not really compatible with agile development methods. Okay, the key points of the part two. Let's recap. Reliability requirements can be defined quantitatively. They include probability of failure on demand, POFOD, rate of occurrence of failure, ROCOF, and availability, avail. Security requirements are more difficult to identify than safety requirements because a system attacker can use knowledge of system vulnerabilities to plan a system attack and can learn about vulnerabilities from unsuccessful attacks. To specify security requirements, you should identify the assets that are to be protected and define how security techniques and technology should be used to protect these assets. Formal methods of software development rely on a system specification that is expressed as a mathematical model. The use of formal methods avoids ambiguity in a critical system specification. All right, I think this is enough for this week and let's update the final project file as well. Okay. I am assuming that you have already started uh, doing your project. You know, you can also use some of your other projects and prepare this uh, um, software engineering uh, methodologies that we are expecting from you okay 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 let's upload our lecture and up update it um, final project file Oh, by the way, before we do an update, I will do something else as well. Yeah, let's update the version and the date. Okay, I think we can. It should be fine. Or maybe let's write it like this. Okay.
All right, end of lecture. Hopefully, see you next week.